When I saw all three spaces styled and completed, I had an OMG moment. So, let me take you back to the start and show you how we did it. This is a slice of paradise in here, isn't it? It's a very it? thin slice. It's a sliver. How do you sort of having to that's a, that's a lot a, of doors in one It's a lot of door area. situation. Yeah. Ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all of this. <laughs> this might be one arch too many for me. <laughs> There's a lot happening here. So I'm gonna be tackling this part of the house where we have the main bathroom, powder room, and two bedrooms. I wanna keep things as simple as possible. The bathroom does have a few services that need to be moved just to make that layout work. So when it comes to the powder room, the bedrooms, I'm gonna keep everything where I can. Wardrobes, walls, nothing's moving. Let's start with the smallest bedroom. Now, this bedroom's really tight and even a single bed would feel cramped. And in this day and age, we all need a good work from home space and this is the perfect home office. I'm keeping things pretty simple as far as layout goes. The wardrobe here, that can stay. I don't need to touch that, it's great storage. And all I'm adding is a big inbuilt desk with some joinery, just for a little bit more extra desk storage. When you think of modern Australia, you always think of light, bright colours, but as Australians, we're bold and we have heaps of personality. So we should bring that into our homes and that's why we're gonna go dark and moody. This is gonna be the new modern Australian look. It's like this nice little library space. So behind the desk, we're gonna use this walnut veneer, which is off the shelf and you literally can just stick it to the wall. It's gonna add a little bit more depth and a bit more texture to the room with the timber grain but the star of the show is gonna be this paint. It's called Blue Quarry from Julux, and it is delicious. Look at that, it is dark and moody and it's gonna go everywhere. Walls, ceiling, it's gonna look so good. So that's the study. Now we're moving on to the main bathroom. Now, when we're talking materials, I actually want this to really speak to the master ensuite. Think of these spaces as siblings. They kind of look the same, but they have their own personalities. So we've got similar Kit Kat tiles, but in a bit of a deeper color, beautiful pattern tile on the floor, and these same white square tiles. Also picking up on some of those timber tones that we had in the ensuite. For layout, this room was pretty tricky for me. I really wanted to keep everything where it was, but it just wasn't practical and it didn't feel like a functional modern bathroom. So I have a plan for this. What I'm gonna do is split the room directly down the middle. On the left-hand side, we're gonna be having a full wet zone, which means the shower and the bath are in the same side of the bathroom and you don't have to worry about water getting everywhere in the space. And then on the right hand side, you've got the perfect spot for a vanity to go in. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the powder room. The loo is right out the door in this little room here and I'm gonna give that a bit of a zhuzh as well. Moving on to the last space in this little area of the home, we're gonna be looking at the bedroom next door. Bearing in mind, this is a family home, so you need rooms for different ages. And I'm gonna style this one for a teenager. We want the teen room to be really practical and fun, but we also want it to be able to change as your child grows up and you can sort of change it into a guest room maybe one day. You never know what that room might end up being. So, at the moment, there's two inbuilt wardrobes here and a chest of drawers. And there's actually pretty good storage in these. So I'm gonna get rid of the drawers and turn it into a little floating desk. And it is a perfect size for a study nook for a teenager to do some homework. Put some felt board up the back so you can pin some things on it. You can really personalize this space. To add just a little bit more interest and personality to this room, what I'm going to do is add some really beautiful panelling to the walls. It's going to have this great little scallop detail. And I'm going to be bold again and paint it in two different colours. So I've got these two great colours from Dulux. We're going to be going with 
unbleached calico and this beautiful little sort of periwinkle cornflower blue called Cuddle Quarter. And those two together are just gonna be a really nice bright color, but it's also gonna be really neutral and you're able to layer other colors and personality on top of that. What are we looking at here, Jono? Um, well, I got rid of the drawers, putting a desk in, but I need the mirror to go and I don't want to get any bad luck if it breaks. So... No, I'm not doing any it. Any takers? No, I'm not doing it. I am too superstitious and I'm definitely not touching that mirror. Okay. But well, I know someone who will. Tim! Oh yeah, Tim! <laughs> What's going on? Can you give us a hand with this mirror? Jono wants Please. to smash it out. Do I want, you can smash it out. I, um, I can't. I, He's too uh, scared. So you want me to have the bad luck? Yeah, mate. No, nah, you, right. you'll be fine. You'll be uh, sweet. All right, right. let yeah. me get my gear. Right. <laughs> oh, false alarm. Oh, look at that. One piece. Oh, How did you get that off in one go? No bad luck for Tim! That is so not fair. See, I couldn't have done that. No, no well done. Call the right guy. I think that's yeah, called did. good luck. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Beautiful. I need that. When working with small spaces, you have to be really clever about where you're placing furniture in the room. Bringing in an actual desk into this room would have taken up way too much space, so we cut a piece of timber to a custom size that fit perfectly between the two wardrobes. It's an easy DIY, and it's cheaper than buying a desk. These old doors, there's nothing wrong with them. They might look a little bit daggy, but some new hardware, a fresh lick of paint, and even a little bit of trim, and you can give them a second life. So there's a lot happening here, but I want to give you a quick update of where we are on this side of the house, starting with the work from home space. In here, we've got our upcycled doors and this color is going to go through the entire space, including the ceiling. I know, it's bold. Onto the teen room, which is right through here. And here it is. We've got this beautiful little niche and arch that we kept from the original house where the study desk is. On the walls, we're gonna be doing this amazing scallop detail paneling, and you know I love color, so we're going bright and fun in here. Now, for the last space across the hall is the main bathroom. We've got the toilet through here, and this is the main bathroom space. New vanity going in, shower, tub, there's a lot to happen, but this is the update for this side of the house. I want to show you where the study's at while I'm painting it because I have one last thing to do and that's actually painting the ceiling. There's a myth going around that you have to paint your walls white to make a room feel bigger. And yes, whilst light colors will bounce light around your room, dark colors will add depth. I've painted these walls dark, but leaving the ceiling white would make the room feel really short and cut off. By painting the whole ceiling, it's going to make this room feel a lot bigger. And the reasoning is, your walls just extend and just keep going up. What you're doing is actually making it have depth and it's gonna be expansive and it's gonna make this room feel a lot bigger than it actually is.
you doing? Just looking at this beautiful little pot. That looks like a sweater. It does! Like a little ribbed cable knit sweater thing. Yeah, it's like the same colour too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah, I think that's nice for like the top on the shelf. Do we need to check the plants first and check the size? So personally, I would always pick the pot first to match all your styling. Okay. And then I would match the plant to the pot. That really speaks to me because it means that I don't have to retrofit planters that don't suit the house. But also something that people will really underestimate is different types of plants work with smooth finishes and ribbed finishes. Of course. Because you, you might have a lot going on with the plant and then not a lot with the pot and so that's good. Get 100%, you get something really crazy with that one, but then I would get something a bit more architectural with this one. That note, let's, yeah, that's let's nice. find a plant. Can we get the sweater in. pot? Let's get the sweater <laughs> pot. We're in the study, it's going to be cosy. In terms of an office, I would always look to put in fern family plants mm -hmm. rather than a succulent okay. or a palm tree because ferns actually purify the air a lot more than the other what? families. Yes. <laughs> so you know how when you're studying, you need to have a bit of fresh air yeah. so that you keep your mind concentrating and you improve your productivity, ferns tick. will do that. Tick. tick, tick, tick. Exactly. The other thing I would always look at is I would always have a bit of greenery and then change the colour or the hue of the plant mm -hmm. so that you have different colours to look at. Working from home is here to stay. But normally when you've got a couple of people in the house, someone's getting kicked out of the study to go work at the dining table. But I have a solution for this. Now you can see I've got these two work zones and this cupboard in the middle. The cupboard is very practical, but also it divides these spaces. Now, if you've got two people working from home, this is perfect because you keep out of each other's zones. And the reason this is all coming together so nicely and it fits perfectly is because we cut these pieces ourselves. You can get all of this in store and you're able to customize it to fit your home. That way you get this beautiful luxe bespoke custom joinery look on a DIY budget. When we first came through the house, Jono and I had such a big laugh about the existing bath. Right, now you know what I'm gonna make you do? I'm gonna make you get in the bath oh. because that's gonna tell us how big this room really is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, I like that there's handles here, so that's easy to... <laughs> is that relaxing? Not yet. We'll make sure it feels relaxing. Okay, good. <laughs> Did he sit in all the baths? I love a bath. And so does Rob, my new BFF, who was my bathroom consult at Bunnings. Rob actually gave me a really good tip about baths. Because we're having an inbuilt bath, if you insulate the outer structure, it's gonna keep your bath warmer for longer. And it's easier to clean because there's no space around the bath. Mind blown. You might remember, I was originally gonna be using this beautiful pattern tile for the floor in the main bathroom here, but as you can see, I haven't used it because when I went in store for my bathroom consult, I was shown these tiles, which I hadn't seen before, and I fell in love with them straight away. And the idea hit me to do this beautiful neutral checkerboard and do it on the diamond pattern just to have a bit of visual interest. Look, it's okay to change your mind when you're making design decisions by yourself. 
just make sure you have all those final decisions locked in before anything's set in stone. Oh, yes! This is epic! Everything is just starting to look so incredible in here. And if you weren't sure what I meant before about a wet zone, this is it. We've got our bathtub, our shower here, got a shower head going here, and we're just about to install our screen. So, the benefit of doing a wet zone is that you get a much larger bathroom space, or the feeling of that, in a much smaller footprint. Then, on this side, We've got our face level storage with our vanity. We've got a beautiful wide sink, lots of storage below. And I'm gonna put one open shelf where you can do some pretty things of folded towels and decorative baskets, things like that. But just, again, a little bit of extra storage. <laughs> Look at that colour! Don't worry, I've got to give it a mix, but we're going bright in this room. It's gonna look amazing. Let's give it a mix. Hey! This hey. one's interesting. <laughs> interesting? It's gonna be great. This is like the super trendy colors for teenagers. This is like a duck egg blue, is it too? It's called Cuddle Half. Just like cuddle half, half a cuddle. If I could give you a half a cuddle. Half a cuddle. Just wait, there's more colors coming. We're painting this one now. What's that one? Unbleached Calico Half. Right, <laughs> interesting name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna look, it's gonna look amazing. Oh, I guess that's why you're the designer and I'm the put it together up. <laughs> You might remember in the main bedroom, we went for wainscoting on the wall behind the bed. And it's a beautiful traditional panelling. But in the team room, I wanted to do something a little bit more updated and modern. And I've got this great little scallop detail. It adds a lot of texture to the wall. I am so obsessed with this scallop panelling. I've cut the panels into thirds and wrapped it all the way around the room as a detail. But you could leave them full length, floor to ceiling, and create an incredible feature wall. I just popped into Bunnings to get some storage options for the internals of these wardrobes. And you might remember before, there actually wasn't anything going on in here. And we did have three drawers underneath this desk. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, why are you taking away storage? But in store, there are so many options from baskets to hang rails to shoe racks. There's endless combinations that you can choose what fits your wardrobes at home. And it's all DIY. Corners are not to be forgotten in a space. I've taken this bland corner and added a macrame hanger from Bunnings and a painted pot. And then on the ground here, I've got a side table and a great little lamp. What you're doing is filling the space from floor to ceiling. And all that's left to do is add a custom DIY shelf right here on the wall. just cut out my abstract organic shape 
And I've got this little scrap piece of MDF I've cut just to size to be the ledge for my shelf. And all I'm gonna do is glue it onto the backing board. That is looking pretty good. And all I need to do is put a coat of paint on it. Now that this is all painted and dried, all I need to do is hang this little picture hook in the back, but you can also use the Velcro adhesive strips if you don't want to drill into the wall. And there you have it, an easy DIY shelf. This end of the house presented some of the smallest and tightest spaces, but with a bit of clever planning and some colour, we now have three rooms that are extremely functional and filled with their own personalities. The study was the smallest bedroom and could barely fit a bed, and now you can have two people in there working from home in a really tranquil space. My favourite thing about the study is the dark navy colour it's painted. That is just something I would never have thought of, nor had the confidence to do. I mean, even the roof is painted. I also love that I've put plants in the study because it's going to purify the air and really improve that concentration point. Plus, I think they look great in the space and there's just something really inviting about that study now. With this bedroom, we worked with the existing footprint, made a few little tweaks here and there to make it more practical, a splash of youthful colour, and now it is the perfect teen room. I wanted the main bathroom to talk to the ensuite, but still have its own character. And now with our large wet zone and a great vanity, this is the ideal bathroom for a family home. This is going to be epic. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, they're here. <gasps> yeah. We have chickens. This is so fun! Let's go!